Hello and welcome. Thank you for joining us on Business Morning. I'm Chimeze Obi Iwago. Well, the federal government has reiterated its commitment to ensure that it drives revenue collection and ensure yearly review of the Finance Act when the annual budget is being prepared. The Minister of Finance, Budget and National Planning, Mrs. Zainab Ahmed, was speaking at the Deloitte Economic Outlook event with the theme, Expectations for 2020, Budget 2020 Strategic Revenue Growth Initiative and Finance Act 2020. She says key reforms such as the Strategic Revenue Growth Initiative will be implemented with increased vigor to improve revenue collection and expenditure management. According to her, the Finance Act 2020 will enable the ease of business support MSMEs, promote fiscal equity, and enable realization of the budgeted revenues. The Finance Act is the first of its kind in the past 20 years in our country. It contains about 56 sections and 97 different changes to seven different tax laws. And this is the result of various tax reform works that have been conducted over the years and the work of the National Tax Policy Review Committee, which we put together. This committee included private sector participants. Deloitte was there, PwC was there, KPMG was there. The big four were there, they supported us. But we also had the Joint Tax Board, so the states were represented, and we had the, all the revenue generating agencies that are uh, that had a role in this. So the review is a large review. What we did in the finance bill of 2020, we selected some of the recommended measures for, um, some of the measures for amendments and brought them into the 2020. So we still have other measures that we didn't bring in because we wanted the ones that would be easy for the National Assembly to accept and to pass and that will have also the quick wins. So there's more bills that will come. We're going to do Finance Bill 2021. The President has directed that with every national budget will be accompanied by a finance bill. The essence is to make sure that we make continuous and gradual fiscal adjustments to be able to meet the aspirations of the national budgets. Well, we're going to do the next, uh, this responsibly to make sure that it's not negatively affecting businesses, that businesses have enough input in the process and also that they have enough time to adjust. The objectives of this finance bill is to remove fiscal equity, to attain fiscal equity by mitigating instances of regressive taxation, to also reform domestic tax laws to align with global uh, best practices, to introduce tax incentives for infrastructure as well as a capital market, and to support small businesses in line with the ease of doing business, uh, but finally, uh, not the least, to raise revenue for government to meet its various physical uh, challenges. As Minister of Finance, Budget and Planning, I was really disturbed when all we were hearing in the media is the increase of the VAT. This finance bill has increased the VAT by 50% from 5% to 7.5%. But there are 97 other provisions. 90% <laughs> of them positive for businesses that are in this finance bill. Yet, all we keep seeing in the media is the increase of the VAT. But I'm glad of lately, I've seen a bit of turning in uh, the narrative in the media. Uh, the finance bi bill is to stimulate Nigeria economy. Tax experts urge to leverage opportunities in the Finance Act. The Finance Act or the Finance Bill is not only about increasing the VAT. There are some aspects of it that are not being discussed. So let me just show you a few of the unsung aspects of the finance bill. One of the major objectives of the finance bill is to ensure fiscal equity. And to, in, in order to do that, we had removed the provision for double taxation, which is arising from excess dividend 
uh, in, re in relation to tax provisions. We've also clarified commencement rules. We've made provisions for unit trusts and we removed ineffective uh, bureau bureaucracy by the removal of the requirement to uh, obtain approval from the Minister of Finance for deductibility of management fees. We've removed, we've also introduced, um, uh, we've removed excise duties which apply to import accessible uh, goods. We've also made some advanced income payments charged on interim dividends. We also amended the minimum tax provision which removes imposition on, of tax on assets and capital and limits exemption to small uh, businesses. The finance objective also has one of its major uh, policy drives, tax law reform to attain global best practice. So we have made provisions to limit the abuse of interest deductible. We have also made provisions to enable taxation of the digital economy. We've also made provisions for real estate investment uh, company. So this is tax exemption of rental and dividend income from income tax aligned with uh, international best practice. We've also allowed now in the finance bill correspondence with the tax authorities via uh, electronic messaging. So you can send email to the tax office. You don't have to physically go and send and file uh, a letter. We have also, as part of the main trust of the finance bill, physical infrastructure as well as capital market provisions. So we have income tax exemptions for real estate investment companies. We have eliminated withholding tax on unit trust investments. We've also introduced income tax exemption on regulated securities lending transactions. And also at that um, Nigerian Economic Outlook 2020 event by Deloitte, the Minister of Transportation, Rotimi Amici, says efforts are underway to construct the Port Harcourt to Meduguri Rail Line. Mr. Amici gave account of what has been done so far in the area of infrastructure development. He also says the President has also approved the construction of two new seaports. The President is doing everything possible to fund transportation, that's one. And you need that. If you don't have that, you won't go anywhere. So you need presidential backing. That's why when people say I'm I say call the president. Because the day he withdraws that, he spent in, term, in funding. I'll be like in another ministry. The second one is that the president is ready to support my movement to any part of the world to borrow money. And you economists know that the problem is not in debt. The problem is revenue over GDP, not debt. We don't have enough revenue. So. If we can borrow and construct all these infrastructures, the president is willing to support us to do, to do that. So for us in transportation, we are, we're doing that. You will ask, let's leave railways, because I've told you about, about, about five railways we're about, we're about to, we are constructing. I've told you about Lagos Ibadan. What I've not done is to tell you the date to complete it, but very soon. Uh, those who say they're using it and it's three hours, is because it's called test run, test run. You don't speed when you're test running. Why? You don't know where there will be a mistake or where there is something that is not supposed to be, and then there will be an accident, and then we have a problem. When they finish this running, I've told you we'll do either one hour, 15 to 20 minutes, or we'll do two hours for those who want to stop at every station. I've told you about Itabe Worry, it's completed. If you say it's a lie, join me in the next two, three weeks, I'll be going on inspection on Itabe Worry to see how ready it is for the present commission. That is ready completely. With 1,000 housing estates for workers ready, workshop, yards, everything ready, tracks ready. Uh, okay, there is one outstanding pro project, and that is communication and signaling. But for a single track lane, you can be running while they're, while they're fixing communication and signaling. Even though they've also told us that before April, May, the, the signaling will be ready, and communication equipment will, come, will have come in. Uh, I've told you about Lagos, Lagos, Ibadan. I've told you about uh, I've told you about Kaduna, Abuja, and now that we're about to start, we're about to start uh, Ibadan to Kano, and the next one we will start, and I hope that by the time we have the conversation, the next one week will be uh, uh, Portakot to Meduguri. <laughs> I need to give you a, the figure that there are about 30 million tons of cargo between Lagos to Kano, 
and we're not consulting based on sentiments where people are shouting, oh, I make sure you will come back and after your tenure to the south. What is happening in the south? They are attacking me in the south, south, and southeast. The truth, there are 30 million tons of cargo between Lagos and Ibadan. Should we leave that and construct the one where the Minister of Transport comes from, which is, which is Lagos to Calabar? There, is, uh, there are 11 million tons of cargo between Portacot and Meduguri. Which one do we construct first? Which one? No, it's not Calabar. You construct Lagos to Kano first because it has 30 million tons of cargo. But out of these 30 million tons of cargo, I doubt that 29, 29 million will not be import. If you say it's a lie, you can't verify. See, see, an industry talking economics, 29 million tons of those cargoes are imported items that we're getting. So I've told you all that, and that's about, that's about railways. I've given you the figures we have spent. $2 billion from Lagos to Ibadan, out of which the loan is um, $1.4 billion. So the rest is $100 million. The federal government is paying by, by itself. And that's what's called discipline, physical discipline. We are paying from our pocket. I was shocked, with all respect to the former president, that $1 billion, 500 million federal government, 500 million uh, China as in bank. Why did we need to borrow money to do Abuja Kaduna? Why should we even borrow money at all to do our railways when, it, when under our passenger we had about $68 billion in our SS crude, SS, crude, SS crude account? The president has approved the construction of two new seaports. I don't know how many of you know that. One in Boni, one in Wari. I don't know how many of you know, and I've said several times, that we don't have seaports in Nigeria. You know we say that several times. What you have is river ports. Apapa tees off the ocean, Tinkan tees off the ocean, and Oner tees off the ocean, uh, Potakot seaport tees, it's worse in Wari and Calabar. The silting is so bad that you will know that you're in a river. So the first seaport that will come take place in Nigeria is the Lekki seaport. The next one will be the Boni deep seaport. And the next one will be the Wari seaport. But there is one by the Akwaibon government. Is it called Ibon deep seaport? Huh? And I've told them, I will give you all the support you need. Ask them. As if I get to my office, the, next, the same day I'm standing and sending it out. And it goes out immediately. 